Hey y'all, it's Stacy with southernbite.com. We're back in the kitchen today making a comfort food classic that lots of folks remember from their childhood. This is my classic macaroni and tomatoes. Now, to start with this dish, I always start with about a tablespoon of bacon grease. Um, if you don't have bacon grease, you could certainly use butter, but for me, macaroni and tomatoes has to have that little bit of smokiness. If you don't have bacon grease on hand too, you could fry a couple slices of bacon in the bottom of your pot here, just to give you that nice bacon grease. You know, it's liquid gold. Anytime we make bacon, we always save the bacon grease. And contrary to popular belief, it's probably better that we don't just leave it sitting on the stove, that we pop it in the fridge or even in the freezer. It'll last for quite some time frozen. So make sure you don't get rid of that stuff. There's all kinds of great uses for it, even salad dressing. I've got our bacon grease melted down in a large stock pot here, and next I'm going to add about 28 ounces of uh, diced tomatoes. Now, every summer my grandmother cans tomatoes, and for some reason there's something about those home canned tomatoes that just give me the flavor that I love, what I expect from macaroni and tomatoes. If you don't have grandma's home canned tomatoes, a, a 28 ounce can of tomatoes off the grocery store shelf will work perfectly, I promise. Um, we're gonna bring this just to a simmer and cook for about 10 minutes so that we allow that flavor of the bacon to get into those tomatoes. We're gonna add about a half a teaspoon of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Now, you can adjust these seasonings. The thing about this dish too is like, everybody has a different idea of what macaroni and tomatoes should taste like. So this is a good base and you can build flavor so that it's closer to what you remember. For instance, a lot of folks remember a very marked sweetness to macaroni and tomatoes. So you can add sugar at this point. For me, it's always been a totally savory dish. But if sweetness, if you remember that sweetness to it, you can add a little bit of sugar. Now, I've got two cups of macaroni noodles that I've cooked according to the package instructions. Um, we wanna cook them to al dente. We don't want them totally, totally mushy because once we add them to our tomatoes here, we're going to cook it a little bit longer. The pasta will absorb some of that liquid from the tomatoes and give it even more flavor. And that additional cook time, we don't want it to become just mush. Gonna stir this together. This is gonna cook for just a few minutes, 10 minutes maybe even. And you've got that classic dish that just feels like home. Y'all, you can find this recipe a ton more on my website at southernbite.com. Just visit the Simply Southern TV tab right at the top. Y'all enjoy. Now, Mary, you know my philosophy. If it's cooked with bacon grease, it's got to be good. Absolutely, and I've heard of macaroni and tomatoes all my life, but I've never heard of people putting sugar in it. Well, as we've said many times before, that's the great thing about Stacy's recipes. You can tailor them to your personal taste. And you can find them all at southernbite.com. The recipes that have been featured on our show are under the Simply Southern TV tab at the top of the webpage. Thank you for joining us today, but it's time for us to run. I hope you'll be back with us next week when we'll talk about a new treatment for folks who are allergic to peanuts. And we've told you about the Department of Agriculture's Farm to School program in previous seasons with satsumas and blueberries. But in Fayette County, the school system is working with Vista Farms to feature local beef on the school menu. I'm Mary Wilson. And I'm Kevin Worthington. We'll see you next time. Simply Southern is produced by the Alabama Farmers Federation and made possible with the support of Alabama Farmers Cooperative and these sponsors.